This is my brand new Mac Mini. Well, it's the box for it anyway. Inside this new Mac Mini is Apple's first crack at an in-house processor, the M1 chip. Now, there has been a huge amount of hype around Apple's 8-core M1 chip and the Mac models that are powered by them. And that hype seems to be justified, with every tech reviewer on YouTube giving these machines glowing reviews. In this video, I'll share my first impressions of this M1 Mac Mini and give you an idea of how GarageBand runs on it. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Patrick and welcome to the GarageBand Guide, where we're all about helping you master GarageBand and improving your music. Okay, so a bit of background then. Of the three Mac models that you can currently get that feature the M1 chip, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the 13-inch MacBook Air, and the Mac Mini, the Mini made the most sense for me. It's replacing my old 27-inch iMac from 2015, so I'm used to the lack of portability, and this way I got to choose my own monitor. I had a couple of issues with the 5K screen on that iMac, so being able to grab a similarly sized 4K screen independently of the machine itself suited me just fine. It's a 4K LG monitor, I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out. I might actually do a video on the full setup that I have going on here, so leave me a comment down below if that's something you would be interested in seeing. Unlike traditional Mac models powered by Intel processors, you don't really get a lot of choice when it comes to configuring the M1 models. The base model Mac Mini comes with 8GB of unified memory and 256GB of SSD storage, which is a ludicrously small amount of storage in this day and age. You can configure this up to 16GB of unified memory and 2 terabytes of storage though. Now, 16 gigabytes of RAM doesn't really sound like a lot, but because of the way it works, it's far more efficient than regular RAM is on an Intel machine. Having said that, this Mac Mini is now my main machine for music production and video editing, etc. So I absolutely upgraded to 16 gigabytes of memory. I also increased the storage to 512 gigabytes as while I do store most files on external drives, I just don't think I could survive with just 256 gigabytes of storage on my main computer. All right, so that's the machine and the nerdy specs of the machine. How does it actually run? Really, really bloody well. That's how. Everything is super smooth and responsive, especially the programs that have been updated to run natively on Apple Silicon. Having said that, apps that open and run via Rosetta 2, Apple's emulation program that allows you to run Intel-based programs on these machines, are just as snappy, to the point where you'll need to go and snoop at Activity Monitor to see which apps are which. To GarageBand then, and one of the best ways to illustrate just how fast this M1 machine is, is to do a couple of side-by-side -side comparisons with my old Intel iMac. Now, I've already bored you to tears with the specs of this machine. The iMac is a 2015 27-inch model with a 6th gen i7 Skylake processor, 32GB of RAM, 2GB AMD graphics card, and 512GB SSD storage. It is a 5 year old machine at this point, but it's no slouch in its own right. However, when cold opening GarageBand, from the first click 
to the last open project opening takes 20 full seconds. The M1 Mac Mini does it in two seconds. Madness. What about performance then? Well, there's not a GarageBand specific benchmark that exists that I can use, but there is a logic one. The idea here is to load up the project and activate as many of these software instrument tracks as you can until Logic throws up a system overload message. So my iMac first. It managed a fairly respectable 59 tracks before giving up the ghost. The Mac Mini got to 70 tracks without even really breaking a sweat. So I kept going. At 80 tracks, the project was still playing back fine. So I kept going. It wasn't until I hit 90 tracks that the project just wouldn't play back anymore. Impressive stuff, especially as this is supposed to be the base model. Like there will not be a less powerful version of these Apple Silicon machines than this. That's just crazy. Which plugins work and which don't? Well, I haven't tested every single plugin that I have installed yet, but I definitely will. So if you are interested in finding out which plugins work and which don't, make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss that video. In this project, I was able to load up a fully functioning version of my favorite Mac plugin of last year, Valhalla Supermassive. Infected Mushroom's excellent plugin Wider loaded and worked just fine too. And Calum Audio's fantastic Tape Pro worked with no issues as well. So it seems that just because a plugin isn't officially supported on Apple Silicon doesn't mean that it won't work. I am looking forward to going through the whole list though. And this seems to be the same story when it comes to gear. My Motu M2 works as normal with the M1 Mac Mini, as does my second gen Scarlet 2i4. My Blue Snowball, Amazon Basics, and Samsung G Track Pro USB microphones all work as expected, as do my Arturia MicroKey and Alesis V25 MIDI controllers. Again, I plan to put together a more comprehensive list of what equipment works and what doesn't, so keep an eye out for that too. The one thing I haven't had much of a chance to test yet is how iOS apps work on M1 machines. I've seen others in the community have varying degrees of success with this, so I'm really interested to see what the possibilities are. Both Pete Johns and Jade Starr have great videos of them exploring this feature, so I'll link to them down in the description if you want to check out 
those. So, first impressions of my new M1 Mac Mini are really good. Now, I'm a bit of a cynical old b but it seems like Apple's old slogan of it just works has become a little bit of a joke in recent years. But with this, I think they've gone a long way towards redeeming themselves. Good job, Apple. I don't have another M1 Mac Mini video to put there yet. This is a first impressions video after all, unless you're watching from the future, in which case there might well be something there for you to click. Who knows? Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.